I knew, not that I'm a prophet, but I knew the question she was going to ask me. I knew it ahead of time because we were talking about COVID-19 and the craziness that's going on in the world. <laughs> the panic seems to be hurting things a lot worse than the virus itself. So we were talking about that, and she said, I want to ask you a question. And I knew it was coming. I knew it. We've all asked the question before. She asked me before she could even get the question out. I had it formulated in my own mind, word for word nearly. She said, if God loves us, why do these things happen? Oh, it's such an old, old question, but people still want to know, why do these things happen? And I'm not going to spend a whole message talking about the coronavirus. In fact, I'm probably finished with it at this point. I'm getting kind of tired of hearing about it, you know. And if we catch it, we'll probably really be tired of it. But I, I just like to kind of go on with life. You know, I found out that if I turn my phone off once in a while, the world almost goes back to normal. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like things are okay. You know, turn the TV off, turn those dumb uh, news talking heads off and, and shut off the computer and everything just kind of, you can hear the birds singing, you know. You, you can smell the blossoms on the peach trees and on the pear trees and, and life just seems a lot better. And I was thinking about this lady that asked me that question though. It's a question that's on a lot of people's minds and, and we've heard all kinds of answers but I want us to look in the Word of God tonight and see if we can find some things that will be an encouragement to us. I just want to encourage us. I'm not going to tell you how to defeat a virus or anything like that, but I am going to tell you how to defeat the bad attitudes and the negative attitudes and the discouragement. And I hope to encourage you some tonight. And I think her question has kind of inspired the title for my message tonight. What in the world is going on? What in the world is going on? Let's read in 2 Corinthians, and we'll read a couple of passages there. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, we'll start there, and then we'll go over to verse, or chapter 4. First, or 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 8. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 8, the Apostle Paul wrote this, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble... Underline the word trouble. We would not have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Sounds like Paul had some difficult times, doesn't it? And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse number 8, he said, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Can we pray together? Father, I love you tonight. I thank you for the people who have come under the sound of my voice. I thank you for the folks who showed up in this room tonight to hear the preaching of the Word of God. Thank you for them. And Lord, for the folks who tune in by way of internet and watch the videos or listen to the audios, Lord, I pray that you'd bless them. Let them know that we're grateful that we have the opportunity to come to them by that method. And Lord, we appreciate them listening in. And Lord, we pray that you'd inspire some of them who live in our locality to visit our church in person. I pray you'd work in their lives, and Lord, all of our lives tonight, encourage us from the Word of God. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Natural disasters, wars, terrorist attacks, and pandemics like we have going on now, uh, they always come as an unwelcome intruder. I mean, nobody welcomes this sort of thing. It's kind of like your nightmare just came true. And our tra tranquility that we had kind of produced in our lives, you know, we got some calmness, we got some, some peace, and, and all of a sudden the whole world has just stood on end and everything turns upside down. And we've had it happen before in our nation. We've had it happen in our personal lives, and, and there have been worldwide pandemics before. These troubles are nothing new, though, to God's people. We have seen it 
and read about it in the Word of God. We've read about it from history. It's happened time and again. The Bible is filled with stories of those who are in trouble and suffering troubles and problems. The Hebrew children had their fiery furnace. Remember that? That'd be pretty difficult. huh? I like to think I've got some faith, but I ain't looking forward to get thrown into a fiery furnace. <laughs> Daniel had his den of lions. I like kitty cats, but I don't want to sleep on a lion's belly or in his belly. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph was cast into prison in Egypt. His brothers forsook him. His master forsook him, put him in jail, and left him there. And he was a good guy. I mean, who would say he deserved that? Kind of like Job, you know. I mean, did he really deserve that? Paul was shipwrecked, and beaten with stripes, eventually had his head chopped off. I'd say he had some troubles, wouldn't you? Peter was sent into prison, and John was exiled to the island of Patmos. I mean, that's, you talk about quarantine. <laughs> He's put on a rocky island where there ain't much growing there except rocks. James had his head cut off. David fled from Saul. Samson had his eyes poked out. But you know what it says in Psalms chapter 34, verse 19? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of what? The righteous. Not that they deserve it, but it happens. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them, delivereth him out of them all. Isn't that sweet? A man by the name of Clyde Gordon, who was completely paralyzed from the neck down, edited a magazine called The Triumph. <laughs> and he said this Christ is no security against storms. But he is perfectly, he is perfect security in storms. He does not promise an easy passage, but he does guarantee a safe landing. I kind of like that. <laughs> Someone else said, the road to success is always under construction. It seems that those who have a hard way always gets more done though. You ever notice that? People who find themselves, I heard somebody say back in years ago in, in Bible college, we'd be working night and day, going to class and day and working at night and man, we'd have to stand up in class to keep them going to sleep and, and uh, somebody go to sleep and nearly fall down and the instructor would say, hey, stand up back there, you're going to sleep. And the student would say, well, I'm tired. He'd say, don't worry about being tired. Tired men rule the world. <laughs> that was their favorite saying. I think, well, I'm, that sounds nifty and all, but I'm still tired. <laughs> and tired people do rule the world. It seems like those who will do anything are the ones that the others will let do about everything. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation or troubles or problems, trials, taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation or that trouble, that pandemic, that problem, that craziness, will also make a way to escape. Hey, he's our refuge. One old preacher said, we ought to be good to everybody because everybody's having a tough time. And it's that way right now. Seems like everybody's having a tough time. We didn't ask for it, but we got it. Even when we don't understand it all, God uses every tragedy Every tragedy, every trouble, every trial, every problem that comes into your life and my life, God has a unique way of taking that problem and letting you, if you watch for it and you're faithful to seek His face, He will allow you to see a silver lining behind that cloud. And that's what we're looking for tonight. <clears throat> there are seven ways that I want to enumerate tonight that God will use a parcel of problems in our lives. He can use your problems. And we're talking about each of us, not just as a world problem, just not as a world pandemic, but all of us suffer problems from what's going on right now or other problems. 
And since we all have problems, these will apply to everybody. How does God use these manifold problems that come our way? How does He use them to get us to see a glimmer of light, a silver lining in the cloud? Number one, He uses our problems to direct us. To direct us. <coughs> Sometimes God <coughs> needs to light a fire under somebody. Huh? Sometimes we just get a little bit used to things. We get a little bit laid back. We get just a little bit snoozy and and maybe God's ready for us to move up a level higher and do something new, do something better, do something more for Him than we have in the past. And He can use problems to light a fire under us. Problems often can point us in a new direction and motivate us to change. Although the COVID-19 and its panic that goes along with it is worldwide, you and I have our own problems that we deal with separately from everybody else. Proverbs 20 and verse number 30 reminds us that God just might be trying to get our attention. Now, sure, nationally and worldwide, God does need to get some attention. I mean, when a, when a nation is killing millions of babies by abortion, you know, that kind of pales that figure of people who are dying in a, in a virus or a pandemic. I mean, and they're doing that on purpose. And God does, I think, want to get our nation's attention. And I think God will get our nation's attention. But it's not just what God wants to do around the world. God wants to do something in your life personally and mine. Proverbs 20 and verse number 30 says, The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil. So do stripes the inward parts of the belly. So God kind of roughs us up a little while, every once in a while, and He has a reason for it, and He can get us, he can get us moving in a direction that He wants. The world deceives us, but after we fall into a trouble of some kind, we begin to look up at Him and we usually don't care as much what people around us think as we care about what he thinks and what he thinks is important. Pride is plowed under in our lives. When problems come up, it usually humbles us a little bit. You ever notice that? Sometimes we need a little humbling. And it doesn't matter what station of life you're in, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're healthy or unhealthy. Sometimes God even takes spiritual people and humbles them as he did Job. He has a way of putting us in our place to move us up to a higher place. So God can use the troubles that comes into our life to number one, to do what? To direct us. And secondly, to inspect us. He can use the problems that comes our way to look us over and try us. I've heard it said that some that people are like tea bags. You've got to put them in hot water to see what they're really made out of. <laughs> and when we have troubles, we get dumped in the hot water and it shows what we are. Let me say that again. When we get dumped into hot water, it shows what we are. Troubles comes our way. And, and I guarantee you that it's not becoming for a, for a Christian to go down to the store and yank stuff out of somebody else's basket and put in their own basket. I mean, where is God in all this? Can God not supply our toilet paper? Christians ought to protect their testimony in a time like this and be more concerned about helping others, doing things for God, than we are feathering our own nest. And God inspects us at times like this. James 1, verse 2 and 3, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. God's got a purpose for letting troubles come into our life. He uses the troubles to direct us, to inspect us, and number three, to correct us. He uses those to correct us. Some lessons we only learn through pain and failure. I've had some, haven't you? And you tend to learn those lessons. Experience might not be all that great of a teacher, but you usually don't forget the lesson. 
it's likely that when you were a child, especially those of us who are a little older, maybe your parents told you, don't touch that hot stove, or maybe your mom said, don't touch that hot iron. Well, we've had to try it. Kind of like touching the wet paint. Just got to try it for ourselves. When you touch that hot stove, I guarantee you, you probably didn't want to do it again. Hello? <laughs> and so God can use the troubles that come our way. He can encourage us by correcting us. I'm talking about getting encouraged tonight from the Word of God. Proverbs 119, or Psalms, I'm sorry. Psalm 119, 71 says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statute. So God lets us be afflicted sometimes because the affliction is a teacher. And we learn from it. So God can also use troublesome times in the fourth place to connect us. <laughs> in other words, to bring us together. When somebody dies in a family... Normally, you see the whole family getting together, don't you? You have a church member to die, you see people kind of gathering together. And people want to be together when they're in trouble, when hard times hit. Somebody's seriously ill, people tend to come together. I remember as a kid in a little community there in the hills of Israel County, somebody in the community would be, be really, really sick, really bad. And man, there'd be a whole house full of company there would come to see about them. I don't know whether the sick person appreciated that or not, but the people of, of the people in his family kind of appreciated it. Man, they'd bring biscuits and they'd bring mashed potatoes and they'd bring fried chicken. I like that part. <laughs> but you know what? The trouble sometimes brings us together. And that's why it's important for us to have church. And that's why we intend to keep on having church. As long as we can have church, we're going to have church. Because we need to be connected together. We are the body of Christ. And, and the body doesn't need to be disjointed. And he said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And so we ought to be assembled. We can encourage one another. We can find out about one another's needs. And we can pray for one another. We can sing together. We can worship the Lord together. And God meant for us to do that. To connect us, people want to be together when troubles come. Trouble not only draws people together, trouble seems to draw people to the Lord. Did you ever notice maybe after a funeral, you might see the whole family show up for church service on Sunday after the funeral. People tend to be drawn closer to the Lord. I mean, when 911 happened, man, you had people... People didn't even know how to pray. You had people praying. And when this has come up <laughs> that we're going through now, you hear a lot of national leaders calling for prayer, and rightly so, because times like these draw us closer to the Lord. In Psalm 119.67, it said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Sometimes people that used to congregate together kind of stray a little. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. You know, what the, you know what the obvious conclusion of that is? After I was afflicted, I got back to where I was supposed to be. <laughs> I want to be around God's people. I want to be around the people that knew how to pray. I want to be around the people that know God. Many a person has called for a preacher in time of trouble to make things right with God. Well, the value of Christians being together is exactly why we have church and why we'll keep on. So trouble unifies. So God's also used sometimes, number five, to protect us. To protect us, not only connect us, but to protect us. A problem can be a blessing in disguise if it prevents you from being hurt by something more serious. I read about a guy who was fired for refusing to do something unethical by his supervisor. He got fired over it. But later, when an investigation came and found out that guy, what that guy was doing that fired him, that guy ended up in the middle of an investigation and got sent to prison. The guy that got fired was gone 
And so the trouble sometimes came, but it protected the guy who wanted to live for the Lord. And sometimes those things happen to us to get us into the right place where God can protect us. Joseph said to his brothers, you'll remember this in Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20, after they had sold him down into Egypt and then he brought them down and fed them and, and uh, they were worried that he was going to hurt them, get even with them for what they'd done to him. And he said this in verse number 20, But as for you, ye thought it, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Boy, that was a troublesome time for old Joseph, but it turned out that God used it. God used it. God used it. And God can use anything in your life and my life. He can use those things. He can use the troubles that are encircling the globe right now. He can use those troubles to protect us and to bring about good if he wants to do so. Number six, he can use the troubles to perfect us. To perfect us. Problems, when responded to correctly, are character builders. Did you hear that? Problems, when responded to correctly, can be character builders. That's why when our kids get in trouble and we wear their hiney out with a switch, they think this is the end of the world. That helps build their character. And sometimes God puts a spanking on us to perfect us for the perfecting of the saints. And that's sometimes when you feel like the preacher's giving you a good whooping. <laughs> I don't want every sermon to feel like a whooping. You'll quit coming. I want to be an encouragement, but I'm encouraging you right now that when the hard preaching comes, the hard preaching can be exactly what you need to build character. Your kids need it. Your grandkids need it. We all need our character to be perfected, to become more mature. And God's going to use the troublesome times to do that. No pain, no gain. Romans 5, verse number 3, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. That sounds like it's a building process, doesn't it? Going through the tribulations, the trials, the troublesome times, the problem times, builds things in our character that need to be strengthened. David said in Psalm 71, 19, O God, who is like unto thee, thou which hast showed me great and sore troubles, shalt quicken me again, and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Sound like the psalmist was expect, ex expecting that those troublesome times were going to bring him up and bring him up even higher than he was before. Here we find the effect of trouble. It was a blessing in disguise. Paul emphasized that all things work together for good to them that love God. We just need to love him more. The graduate degree of spirituality comes from attending the University of Hard knocks. <laughs> these things, these problems that we're going through right now, God has control over that. And he'll use those things to direct us, to inspect us, to correct us, to connect us, to protect us, and finally to project us. Here's what I mean. The surge of trouble focuses us outwardly and it can further God's cause Listen, there's more people listening to sermons on Facebook and social media of all kinds right now than there has been in ages and God's given us an opportunity to reach some of those people. And I want them to know the, the blessed gospel, the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, why his blood was shed on the cross of Calvary. And some of those folks who haven't ever heard 
or maybe they've never listened close enough to understand it, can finally hear the message now because their heart has been touched and now they're willing to listen and they can find out through the blood of Jesus how to be saved. And even though they may perish here, even in the COVID-19, if they perish, if they've given their heart to Jesus, they can be saved for eternity. I say that gives us the opportunity to project the Lord Jesus better to serve him more. Boy, witnessing right now, probably, I mean, if you can get close enough to somebody to listen, people may not want to open their doors to you, but I guarantee you, if you get, a, if you get somebody that, that's not afraid of catching something, you can, you can probably have an open door to their heart right now, telling them about the Lord. People are more willing to listen. And if they won't open their doors, maybe they'll open up their computers and at least hear us on the Internet. And they're probably more willing and they're looking for answers now. And so that gives you and me the opportunity to share more, even on the social media like Aaron was talking about. If we have more shares with friends who are not saved, sharing the gospel, and look, not just being a good example to them, that's important. But I mean giving them the real gospel, tell them how to be saved. We may have more opportunities like that, especially if death comes knocking on some doors. Death is not a very welcome visitor, but it does open some doors for the gospel. If God's going to give us songs in the night, first he has to make the night. I've been told that the Weather Bureau in the Caribbean uses planes to observe cyclones and when they're going north, they get out on the fringes of the cyclone and catch a tailwind and man, they can travel fast. And when they're ready to come back south, they just go to the other side of the storm and catch the winds coming back the other way and, and man, they can go. And a troublesome time is like that. God can use it to project us, to propel us, to thrust us forward at a faster speed and help the work of Christ even more than it has in the past. When an eagle knows a storm's coming, they say an eagle will get up in a real high place and wait for the high winds to come and then launch out. And that eagle, instead of going down, just goes higher because of the wind under her wings. And the storms of life come our way. Don't you think God wants us to get up high enough, close enough to Him to get some wind under our wings and let Him project us even further? Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. God is at work in your life. And if you let him, he can do some great things with you. You can be a water walker instead of a boat rider. Amen. Someone said, For God has marked each sorrowing day and numbered every secret tear. For heaven's long age of bliss shall pay for all his children suffer here. I believe that's true. Trouble is a fact where God can manufacture the product that he wants. Let's let him work in our lives. Be encouraged, not discouraged in this time of trouble. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that you'd help those who are listening by way of recording or on live stream, as well as the people in this room. If, if there's one that do not does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, I pray that this would be the night that they'd pray something like this, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I don't deserve heaven, but I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. I know you died on the cross to pay for my sins, and I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. Make me a real Christian right now. And Lord, I pray that they'd ask you to do that for them and that you'd hear their prayer. Lord, I pray you'd bless tonight in an unusual way and let us respond with encouragement to the things that's happening around us and to see the glory of the silver lining behind the cloud so that we can know what in the world you're doing. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you stand together with us and as a piano?